So welcome to this release presentation of CURL 880. I'm Daniel Stenberg. This is May 22, 2024. So yeah, this is me. I, uh, this is my workplace and um, I work for Wolf SSL. That's the link to my website where it says everything about me. So today I'm going to do a release presentation that I've done many times before. Uh, going through a little bit about the numbers uh, included this time, something about the security situation, a bunch of changes we've done in curl that we are introducing in this release, some of my favorite bug fixes or bug fixes I think are noteworthy to talk about, something about coming removals in curl, two removals actually, and uh, some things we might do next in curl or might not, uh, uh, there are at least things coming. So this is the 200, release 257, starting from the dawn of time, counting all releases back to 1996 when we did the HTTP GET release in November. <clears throat> so this time around, we have a lot of participation or a, a great deal of people have helped out. We count 85 contributors. That's authors, bug reporters, contributors, just helpers in general. So 41 of these names are new, 3,173 in total. 49 of the contributors actually wrote patches, uh, commits that we merged, 20 of them new. So 1,272 authors in total, quite a lot of people and certainly more than average. So the average is slowly increasing, at least the average sort of over the last 12 months or so. And this was a regular curl standard release cycle, which means that it's 56 days since the previous release. That's the eight week cycle. That's what we aim for. So yes, we succeeded. We did not do a patch release this time. So we have a full 56 day cycle. It makes it 9,560 days since we did the first curl release. I always struggle with counting. Do I count the first HTTP GET release or do I count the first curl release? So the, a little bit. And <clears throat> anyway, so this time around, I, I, I'm quite pleased to say that we have zero new security vulnerabilities to talk about. So there's nothing new announced, published, and there's actually nothing in the queue either. So it's been a few months without... Well, we've had a report of suspect, suspected things, but they've all been cle cleared as uh, no security related things found since, well, the last two months at least. So yay for that. I mean, it's of course there are things dormant, people haven't found them yet. So I'm sure we will have more coming in the future, but it's at least good to f see that it's lit, at least we have sort of slowed down the rate a little bit this year. We do new things uh, regularly in the project, as you know, and this time around we have a bunch of things to just talk about. <clears throat> so for example, we have added a, another struct field in the struct that is returned by curl version info. This contains the libRTMP version. And I mean, we have supported building curl with libRTMP for a very long time. You just couldn't get the information uh, in a structured way, exactly which version number it used or it uses. And now you can. There actually are still, there's still a few other potential third party libraries that you can build curl with that aren't exposed in, in this struct. And I suspect that we will extend this a little bit more going forward. Starting now, we can also do directory listings with file colon URLs. Um, in the same standard that we support file or directory listings with a lot of other protocols, right? If you, if you end the URL with a slash, the trailing slash in the URL, it means please do a directory listing. You can do that with FTP, SFTP, um, and you could possibly do it with SMB. I'm, I'm uncertain right now. But anyway, so this just adds another protocol for which you can do directory listings. So basically just make it the, the support for the file column slightly more complete. You can now build curl to support IDN on, on Apple devices like a Mac OS and iOS and you know iPad OS and watch OS and all those using the Apple IDN for uh, international domain name support, which saves you from having to use a external dependency if you build curl on these operating systems. 
um, that's cool. And uh, we also added a new API call because why not? I think this is number 94 or something. Um, it's called multi curl multi weight FDS, and FDS is, of course, file descriptors. Um, this is very similar to the function called curl multi get FDS. It is a way for a application to extract the, the file descriptors that uh, curl is currently working with or working on, and so that the application can wait for activity on those particular file descriptors. Uh, this work, this is really designed if you, for example, have an application that is using poll and not select for waiting for events, then this is very convenient because the other API that we had for this is very select focused and select has its drawbacks. It doesn't scale as good as poll. Um, <clears throat> we support this uh, set cipher, um, well, ask for a specific cipher or a cipher list now with the embed TLS backend. Previously, we didn't support it for, for that uh, TLS library. We have dropped support. I mean, this is a change, right? So we have removed support for this authentication bit. And to be specific, we don't drop support for NTLM. NTLM is an authentication method. We still support that, but this particular way of supporting it, which we called NTLM underscore WB, and WB stands for WinBind, which is a particular tool shipped by the Samba project, I think. So it was a particular way to support NTLM. Basically, nobody's using this with curl, and it was problematic. It's been broken for a long time in curl, so it actually didn't work. So, and because no one even knew about that or reported that, we know that this is pre basically unused by users. So dropping it should be, uh, no one should care or notice, ideally, hopefully. Um, we have experimental support for ECH. So if this is something you care about, encrypted client hello, encrypting the final parts in the TLS handshake, removing or hiding the SNI hostname part, do consider joining that experiment. Try to get out and work with us to, to help us polish that. It, it has several kind of requirements and, and steps that will make it slightly difficult for you to go there, but um, do check it out. And I added a yet another feature bit in the curl API, which um, uh, bear with me. So in, in the typical way, it, when you uh, parse an URL with the curl URL API, it actually doesn't care about empty queries and fragments. It basically uh, considers empty queries and fragments to be absent. So that is sort of uh, when you make a canonical a, a URL, it'll just throw them away because if it's not there, it's not there. But now you can ask uh, with this bit, you can ask to get to make the URL API tell you if it was there, but it was empty. So basically, you know, if, if the URL ends with a question mark, for example, that's an empty query, right? It's, it's no query there, but the, the question mark was still there. So now you can make the uh, curl URL API tell you that. Previously, curl didn't support that because curl doesn't care about that internally. So we didn't expose that feature because we don't use it internally, but now we, so if, if you're an application where you care about the difference with with or without that question mark or just the pound sign in, as in the fragments separator, now you know, now you can get to know that. <clears throat> so this time we have a record amount of bug fixes, 220 bug fixes in 56 days. Uh, we've never done so many before in any release actually. So it's an amazing amount of uh, bug fixes. Of course, a lot of them tiny bug fixes. So bug fixes is, is, is just a number, right? It doesn't really say us uh, say much because even fixing a typo in the documentation is a bug fix. Fixing a silly things, uh, even fixing typos in comments in code is a bug fix, even though uh, it might not affect you, you might not care, but still 220 of them is a lot of fixes. 
some of the bug fixes we've done this time around, I want to highlight to you because they might be more important, actually affect users or affect your use cases. So let's let's take a look at some of them. I've tried to group them this time uh, on, uh, in different ways. So we have build and distribution fixes that I want to mention is, for example, we are now have a fully reproducible tarballs and they're so now um, we build the tarballs in ways so that if I reproduce, if I want to, I can rebuild the exact same tarballs and they end up, the, I mean, binary identical, even if I do it many times. And we now build them in a way that others can do that too. So if you want to verify that we didn't do anything weird in a curl release, you can build the tarballs yourself and verify that they end up identical as the ones that we have shipped. Um, I, I will do a separate blog post soon detailing this exactly. It's easy, but I still want to tell everyone how to do it. And as a combination or, or a, a friend <laughs> relative to this reproducibility, we now generate and, and provide this release tools document in the tarball that details which tools that are used in using which versions to actually produce the tarball because we generate a few files that we ship in the tarball, basically using all the tools. So um, yeah, you can check that document out and it helps you understand how to build an identical tarball yourself. Um, and we also build the tarballs with a Docker image. So we can also, also do that with Docker. <clears throat> um, and uh, we removed a bunch of files, and these were actually pretty big files. So now we have sort of the delta number of lines uh, in this release is actually negative 10,000 lines or something. And primarily, we remove these uh, MS um, Visual C Studio project files for recent um, Visual Studio versions, basically because there's no point in us supporting them because uh, you can generate them easily with CMake. So we try to re remove stuff that we don't have to maintain because you can easily generate them yourself with CMake instead. And then, then we don't have to maintain that set of files. That, that's also why we keep some of those for older Visual Studio that you cannot generate um, with CMake. That's for Visual Studio users and should be rare. Most Visual Studio users should go for something more modern and then you should be fine. We also fixed things like in the configure script for GCC 14. So GCC 14 launched not too long ago and they have now by default, they are more picky with some behavior in the C language, which made, for example, our um, our checks for the how to do uh, non-blocking sockets to always fail, basically, because uh, the, this, <laughs> the, the check code was written in a way that GCC 14 would always complain about and, and cause an error in the build. So all checks failed, so we couldn't figure it out. <clears throat> we did this fun thing. Um, well, someone named GitHub, they broke our CI systems quite badly during this uh, release cycle. Uh, sorry, it wasn't GitHub. It was actually the homebrew. Uh, I don't remember anymore. Uh, and, but anyway, they basically added a .curl RC in the home directory of the user that ran CI jobs. And um, then basically they uh, ruined all tests that we ran in all CI jobs on those machines. And now we sort of, we came up with this mitigation a little bit by making sure that we all we try to run all curl tests that run the curl tool to use the dash q as the first option because it means that it will ignore the dot curl rc file if there is anyone so the next time someone in invents this fun thing in a virtual machine that we run in the ci setup we should hopefully not get affected um, and we of course we made sure that uh, when you disable docs building with configure, configure dash dash disable docs. Uh, it does not try to install any of those docs <laughs> that you didn't build. <laughs> Basically fixing the make install target for, for those who actually explicitly decide to uh, disable the docs building. Nowadays, to, you need, when you run curl and you want to build docs, you need, for example, Perl to be present and, and 
some users don't like that because they want to have a minimized uh, environment when they build curl and then you can choose to not build the documentation and if you don't build the documentation that's basically building the man pages rendering the man pages in a man page format you still have the documentation in the tarball as um, markdown anyway we've fixed some interesting things um, in the curl tool as well of course and uh, for example uh, the dash dash help option now actually uses the terminal with a little better so unless or rather said it like this if you have a little bit wider uh, terminal it'll use the width a little bit better so not make it as narrow and it makes it i think a little bit easier on the eye easier to read um, because it doesn't have to just stick to 80 columns if you have more columns available and i these days i guess most people actually have more columns than 80 in most terminals i fixed a cpu busy looping bug when when you did um, this upload with the dot or a period because this is a way to um, read from standard input without blocking so basically if you want to use curl as a filter so that it starts to upload before this st uh, standard in is complete so you instead of reading the entire input and then doing the upload it would upload while reading input and this could cause a cpu busy loop in a unpleasant way i added a kind of a sort of lame thing here but uh, now if you try to do um, for example if you try to do a curl command line and and you provide an argument to an option and that argument starts with a unicode quote character you get a warning displayed because you probably didn't intend it to be a unicode code quote character maybe you wanted it to be a ascii quote character and why yeah because a lot of people uh, end up copying examples from online sources where they use these smart or unicode code quote characters and if you paste them into a curl command line and run it it does not do what you think it does right because a unicode quote character is not the same as a regular quote character and the regular quote character is managed by the shell usually what but that is um, but the shell usually does not handle the unicode code character so the that unicode quote character then ends up as the first character in your actual argument usually not at all what you want or expected or thought you would do and it makes it really it makes um curl behave in ways that is surprising and um sometimes hard to understand what's going on especially if you then have a space in your argument because then yeah everything turns weird and now at least we try to help the user say hey wait a minute do you really want this and then it goes on anyway but at least it helps you and, and signals um what what might be the problem a lot of words for a th tiny thing so and we had a regression we have uh, sometimes accidentally truncated the e-tag file when you use the e-tag options and so the file you saved on disk to store the e-tags it could get reset in some circumstances highly annoying because then you would do the next re uh, request without an e-tag uh, in vain or without it actually without the e-tag actually having had changed okay so we did a bunch of things in tls libraries as well bug fixes around that <clears throat> for example bug fix and bug fix we now use a more common code for doing cypher suite lookup for for the bare ssl uh, backend we have a, a rather recent new common code for Cypher Suite lookups in general. It's a pretty clever one. So it stores kind of a small amount of data per Cypher, and and it now can look it up and use it for different for the different several different TLS backends at least. We fixed the problem with embed TLS, which pretty much made embed TLS curl with embed TLS not work at all because it would return an error because we they actually change behavior of their library because suddenly when you upgrade it to some particular version it would always return error because now you need to call the functions in a different order than we did in the past 
but we fixed that now and it should work both with older and newer. We also support TLS 103 with modern or very recent versions of embed TLS. I think that's, it, and it's, um, I mean, it was one of the most recent ones, so it's fairly new. <clears throat> but now at least you can use TLS 1.3 with embed TLS, which has been a long time coming, and yay for finally going there. With OpenSSL, we removed or unset this option again for more or less by mistake. We let this one slip in a while ago. Uh, so this SSL mode release buffers is just an off. Uh, it's an, an option that you can tell OpenSSL, and it's um, what does it do, right? The name doesn't say anything, but it's it it instructs OpenSSL to release memory faster than it would do otherwise, with the effect that it actually uses less memory, but with the opposite effect that it does a lot more memory allocation. So instead of saving a buffer a little while until it will use it again, it will free it and then allocate it again later. So it it accidentally then made curl with OpenSSL use a lot more allocating, allocation calls to, to, I mean, it was noticeably higher. So by removing this option, again, we use slightly more memory, but we also save a lot of memory allocation calls. We fixed a memory leak that would occasionally happen with WolfSSL. Um, right, and other backends fixes, well, TLS is our backends, but we also did other backend related fixes. So in, for example, we can now do <laughs> LDAP properly with IPv6 addresses, which was broken probably for a fair amount of time. I don't know exactly when we broke it or if it ever worked, um, but now it should work. And we now have fixed the quiche backend, which is used for quick and HTTP 3. We fix it in two different ways. For example, we uh, we now properly close <laughs> transfers when we, when connection close, so, so that we don't have a lot of uh, zombies uh, laying around. And we also fix timeout handling with quiche and use uh, sort of we tr rely on quiche's own. Uh, timeout handling better than we did before. So HTTP 3 should work better with Quiche now. And of, of course, a bunch of other more general libcurl fixes that we did. Uh, we had and we, we had a global cleanup crash in Windows uh, as a remnant from our introduction of doing name resolves in a different way on Windows. We're, we're not using threaded name results by default on Windows anymore. We do it asynchronously because Windows has a asynchronous API that we can use, which saves us from using threads uh, quite a lot. And that saves a lot of memory and uh, it's much more efficient. But eh, the downside is that it, we had, had a crash. We had a regression that uh, some of the compressions, HP compressions we have, uh, like Brotley and a few others, they actually caused an error in the previous release because we we didn't do things correctly. So we had to pass through zero length writes correctly, which we optimized away there for a while without noticing because we didn't have test cases enough. But now we do, and now we find it and found it and fixed it. And we have a we now ignore duplicate chunk encoding requests. So if you get a content uh, transfer encoding header. Um, from a server and you get more than one chunked encoding a request or header, uh, we would error out because uh, you shouldn't get that. But apparently that's being used in the wild servers except, uh, sorry, browsers accept that uh, generally it seems. So now we accept it too under protest, of course, but what do we do? Um, we fixed this uh, option, which uh, another regression, the curly info request size, it basically asks after a, a transfer, how big was the actual request we sent? It was broken, so it always said zero there for a while. We've added support for uh, more tracing when doing FTP. So if, if you use the curl global trace option or the from the command line tool called trace config, and you ask for FTP, you get more details about FTP details, which is handy when you want to debug problems with FTP or you don't understand why curl doesn't do what you want when you do FTP or your server doesn't do what you thought it would do. 
we're uh, fixed a problem when you, when you have a client write fail uh, we didn't stop or we didn't reset the stream properly so we would just give it up which made the server not understand that we've actually given it up until much later or delayed or would cause some weird funky issues now we do and someone figured out that if a server actually when we reuse a connection with HTTP 1, right? And we do a second request on that and we get a different HTTP version response back in a in the second request. That's not supposed to happen. And now we reject such, uh, at least when, it, when they changed major version, right? If it pretends to be a version two suddenly when it was version one before. Uh, and basically because you can't do that switch. And so it's, uh, it's a sign of something seriously, suspiciously, bad or potentially malicious so curl ejects bails out returns error and this is a subtle fix of course uh, because i introduced a new state in the general multi-handle state machine and really uh, the main effect is that we now have a, have a separate we have this sep new state because it now makes it easier to differentiate between restarting the current transfer and restarting the state machine with a new transfer because it, the same state machine can be used when you for example go to a redirect and if that redirect it's pos potentially a separate connection right so you can still go back in the state machine and do another transfer and I, we survived with a single state for or resetting the state machine in, in for both that same request same transfer and the new transfer but that was basically not a good idea because it made the timeouts got completely wrong when we started a, the same transfer so basically this fixed timeouts in some weird edge cases age cases quite significantly and in particular uh, or related separately is also that i've also fixed how we do timeouts in the api when when, when you add transfers that don't have a connection yet, right? For example, you can do with curl, you can set up rules, right? So you have, I, I, I won't want to use maximum this many transfers per host name or at least, or maximum this many connections at, in total. And then you add a lot of transfers. So curl will queue them up because they can't start yet due to these conditions or requirements that you have. And you can also say that, hey, I want this request to be pipe or sort of multiplexed on a connection if it can. So it could put a lot of uh, transfers in a queue waiting for a condition for it to get started. And in that condition, it might not have a, an associated connection yet. And due to silly logic and my stupid brain, uh, they would not get um, they would not be handled correctly for timeout. So if you had a strict timeout, for example, they should timeout within a second if they haven't managed to complete within that. They could sometimes still uh, hang around and linger around in that queue if they didn't have a connection, even though that timeout had actually expired. So now it should have much more accurate timeout expiry in particular in these conditions. Tiny details, most of you won't notice. Uh, okay, and uh, <laughs> we had this fun problem when the download is completed and you had said a post upload, but there's nothing to upload uh, and curl would uh, potentially get stuck on that anyway, because there was a pausing there, but the entire transfer is actually done. So nothing more will happen. We had a mistake that we didn't do exactly. Uh, no, we did more than we documented and tested that we did with proxy credentials when you provide it in the API and now it's fixed. We didn't allow, this is a regression. I don't know exactly when I introduced it, but you couldn't actually set the port number to zero in a URL anymore. We have been, that support has been a little bit on and off because um, I remember I fixed it a long time ago. I wrote a blog post about how to do I mean, treating blog uh, the port number zero as, as a real port number, and then at some point in time, I we must have broke it, broken it again because when I tested it a while ago, it didn't work. Now it works again. Of course, uh, very few people actually use port number zero because trying to use that is uh, is not going to work for most people. It's a recipe for uh, disaster. But there's nothing in the URL standard, and there's nothing in TCP or etc. that prevents port zero from being used. 
So I, w I just wanted to make it's the correct thing to do. It should support port number zero because it's a valid port number. I had a problem, or found a problem, we got the reported problem. When you do a redirect to a fragment only URL, you know, a fragment being the part that starts with a pound sign, right? So if you have a fragment only, you redirect to just that a fragment, another fragment on the same page. Um, we misbehaved on that redirect. And as you, as you might know, of course, a fragment is a local part, so you don't actually send the fragment part over the wire when you ask for, for a URL. So doing a, re a redirect to a fragment only um, URL is, of course, it won't. It's the same URL over the wire because it's just a different fragment part, and the fragment part is local. Anyway, that was a fix in the URL API. We also had a memory leak in, in the WebSocket error path. So in some cases, when you had an error, where you would leak memory with WebSocket. <sighs> okay, those were some of the fun bug fixes we did this time around. And as I mentioned, we have about 200 more of them. So you better read up on the change log if you want to get into the details or just, you know, run curl 880 instead. And um, if you still have problems, report them to us. We've discussed quite a lot this time around uh, about this particular uh, removal that we have decided to do in May 2025. Yes, that's a year from now. We're going to remove support for TLS libraries without TLS 1.3 support. So all of those, all of those, if there still are libraries around that curl supports and those libraries don't support TLS 1.3 in May 2025, we will drop support for them. And this, this is basically because TLS 1.3 was published in 2018. So it's been quite, or was it 2019? It doesn't matter. It's at least five years and maybe six years by this time next year. And we just want to make it easier for users to pick solid, good TLS solutions. TLS 1.3 is used widely on the internet and going with libraries that aren't 1.3 supported is going to cause you some issues and quirks and problems going forward. And this is also why we give everyone a lot of time to adjust to this, to complain, to consider, to, you know, we can do a lot of things, but this is where we want to go. Right now, there are two libraries that we support that, are, that aren't supporting 1.3, and at least one of them I think is very unlikely to do it. So at least one library seem, seems like to, to be in the queue for, I mean, pretty certainly going to get removed in 2025. But we'll see, we'll come back to this and I'm sure I will we'll mention this in all release announcements <laughs> for the next year. So there, there will be times and opportunities to talk about this more. And of course, we have this other little tiny detail that I will do soon. And that is, I will we will stop supporting space separated no proxy patterns. And, and this sounds silly, but it's just one of the tiny things I want to do to make sure that we sort of join the effort of making sure that the no proxy handling, as in the no proxy environment variable and the curl opt no proxies option and the dash dash no proxy option for curl tool is supported in more unified way since it seems most other tools and libraries that support no proxy, they require them to be comma separated. So we will go with them and also Rick sort of insist on comma separation and not just space separation. So nowadays you can actually use either one with curl. And I mentioned this for a long time, just to make everyone aware, you should use comma separation. And then, because then you will be just following um, the main path, that's the way to do it. And so since it's going to happen in July, it's going to be, I think in the next release, or is it going to be in the next, next one? Yeah, uh, well, let's see. We'll work that out. The next release of curl is likely to be called 8.9.0, 8.9.0, because we have things, re changes, features that are queued up that we probably will merge. For example, we have um, zeroing out sensitive buffers as a option, um, or I mean, that's a 
pull request there's an option for us to merge and we've been discussing it it's been worked on and it's one of these things that we've we're, we bring up every now and then people bring it up every now and then if we put sensitive stuff in in buffers should we work harder on clearing them out earlier to sort of reduce the risk that they ever appear somewhere in, in when we have a security problem or in other ways so yes it seems likely that we will go with this going forward. We also have a pull request for in, for adding support for MPTCP, that is multi-path TCP, um, and Linux supports it. There are other operating su systems that support it. So we it seems that it's basically asking the, the TCP stack to use it. Uh, so curl doesn't actually have to do a lot, but it seems likely that we will add support for this option so that users can ask their TCP stacks to enable it. So you might get to use it in the future. Multipath then being that you're actually, the TCP stack actually uses different paths through the network to the target server, if supported. We still have this negative DNS caching option, or not, that's not an option, it's mostly a PR for it to make sure that we cache negative DNS results uh, for a while, I, I think it's right now it's it caches them for half of the DNS cache timeout, and I think that basically makes curl more efficient in handling when you resolve a host name multiple times in a row, and and it's not <laughs> it doesn't exist the host name, so we could cache the negative result for a while as well as as since we already cached the positive results. I have another URL API feature bit. So I want to, and this, I'm, I'm pretty sure I will merge this because this is one I work on and I want to have this myself. It's a way to ask the, the, the URL API to extract parts, but don't, extra, don't guess. So if you provide a URL without a scheme, as you can do with curl, which is a, it's not really a URL, it's a URL like. So anyway, when, when, the, when the URL API guesses the scheme, you can still ask the URL API, did you guess the scheme or not? Basically, you can ask, tell me what scheme this URL had, but don't give me the guessed one, which makes it, makes it return a blank one if it, if it only has one that it guessed before. We have a PR pending. It might, might need some more work. It certainly needs your eyes and attention. It's a way to set the IP type of service field in the ipv4 header um, so it's a it's a field in the ipv4 header and it's called type of service in with this supposedly new option to the curl tool this is a tool only option you can set it and it's an it's a um, eight bit field so basically well zero is default so set it to one to 255 and uh, you could use it for whatever purpose and Sometimes you have network devices or network equipment that would check it out or otherwise. Um, this is only an IPv4 header uh, in uh, header field, but there are related ones on IPv6. So I think it's a um, we should consider if we should do it slightly differently so that it would work for IPv6 as well too transparently, or maybe we shouldn't. Uh, the discussion is not closed there. So if you're interested in this, uh, join join us and, and say, speak up your mind. What, how would you like it to work? The next release then, if it becomes the 8.9.0, we don't know exactly yet, but it, it is likely and it's likely to happen on July 17, because that is exactly eight weeks from now, right? That's the, the URL with the pending release notes and the release cycle is going to look like always in case you have forgotten. So this is the release Wednesday, it's today. Then we cool down, just make sure that we haven't done any really bad regressions. And we're rather, if we have done any bad regressions within this 10, and we figure that out within 10 days, we can do a patch release within these 10 days. So we will not merge any new features or breaking changes, or we don't do breaking changes or any sort of changes at all, really. We just merge bug fixes now for 10 days. Uh, so we have a chance to do a patch release if in case we need, in case of need. And then there's another Saturday 
10 days from now when we open the feature window. Then we have three weeks of feature window and then we there's another th Saturday and we have feature freeze for 25 days until there is another release Wednesday and then we ship it. So we're on May 22 today. On June 1 we, we open, June 1st we open the feature window. The sec 22nd we close the feature window again and we freeze the features and then on July 17th we ship the next curl release. So, you know, the eternal cycle of 56 days of curl releases. And as always, if you want more or rather commercial help with your curl stuff in any way, you know, bug fixes, holding hands, helping you with issues, get in touch. And uh, if you have any bugs, just go to GitHub slash curl slash curl and fi uh, file your issues and we will get to them as soon as we can if you have any security related issues don't publish them in the um, public first but if you come to us and submit them on hackerone.com slash curl and of course there's a bug bounty there so if you have a genuine security problem we will pay you well from little to a lot of money depending on the severity of the problem I think we say somewhere around 10k USD or something if you find a critical bug, which of course no one has done for a decade or something, but still, I guess it's possible. I want to highlight that the top sponsors of uh, the Curl project remain the same ones as before. Here they are in May 2024. Um, and that's about it. This is Curl. 880. Thank you for watching and um, see you in another release presentation. Bye.